What's up, everyone? Welcome back to season two, episode three of Track Talk Podcast. We are your hosts, Emma and Hannah, and I think it's time for me to drop the season two. We're just, it's episode three. Two. I've been saying it. Episode two, episode, I guess it's episode, episode three. three. Yeah. I've been saying it, but I gotta drop it. Yeah, I think everyone knows we know we're, we're on, in season two. We're on season two. It's episode three. Welcome. We're going to um, chat about some extensions, the Rolex 24 Hours of Daytona. We've got some driver lineup news. Just like not a whole lot going on, but enough to give us something to talk about. Mm -hmm. Or let's start with David Malukas. Yeah. If you had seen our clip um, on Instagram and TikTok, we are going to be chatting with him again this week. So excited. And we need you guys to help us figure out not what to talk about, but we want you guys to submit your questions and anything that you want to ask David, let us know. Um, you can send us a DM. You can say it in the comments. But yeah, let us know any burning questions you have for David. Keep it respectful, but we might just ask it. Mm-hmm. Just wanted to get that out before we forgot. And also, thank you for everyone's like kind comments and messages to us about the video. I think that the video took everybody off guard <laughs> because I think you guys are probably like, no, there's no way. That no way they FaceTime they David. They just Malukas. FaceTime him, right? <laughs> And we did. So. We did. That was. It's weird. <laughs> Look, we never thought that we would either. But um, shout out was, David. Shout out Aaron McLaren. In the episode, did you put in the audio of him with the desk? No. Okay. So, <laughs> so this is just like a little funny story about the Facetime call. But um, we had a time set and we called him and he didn't answer. He ghosted us. <laughs> and we were like, oh, okay, that's it. Like. It's all good, but like, it's just not going to happen. And then he called us back and he had been like, I don't know if he was in like the complex of his, wherever he's living and like picking up like packages, but he just had like a bunch of boxes in his hands and he said that they're parts for a desk that he's Mm -hmm. building. (laughs) Okay. Well, it was a few weeks ago when he had posted on social media that he was building his desk and then he was like, I gave up. And so I guess he they got the wrong parts, but now anyway, it was just really funny. But I was like, I can't use this in the clip. Like, it was just funny because it's like he's just like so unserious, and like mm-hmm. we know that. But like we Facetime him for like a promo like video, and he's like, oh, so sorry guys. Like I'm just like I just got all these pieces from my desk to bring. Up. <laughs> like we'll give you a minute. Don't like, worry. No problem. Just call us back when, you, when you're all good. <laughs> anyway, so we're looking forward to that. To chatting with him. Send us your questions, and we might just ask him. So excited um let's chat also in the topic of mclaren contract renewals mm-hmm. lando norris and charles so charles came out first hey mm-hmm. with ferrari and then like a few days later mclaren mm-hmm. came out with lando. it was the next day yeah it was charles the i can't even remember if it was thursday or friday and then lando was announced the next day how do you feel about that i mean i'm not shocked i had some people on my my personal gms also being like so we're i were pumped that like charles is locked up and i'm like Look, I never thought that Charles was going to leave Ferrari. Like, no part of me thought he would. He just eats, sleeps, breathes Ferrari. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's, like, obviously very hard to be a Ferrari fan right now, especially, like, before the season even starts. And they're like, oh, yeah, we're using this as, like, a... We're not... The goal is not the championship this year. It's like, well... Yeah, which also throws me off. Like, Charles' (laughs) goal is a championship. So I just feel like team and driver goals need to align. Um... But obviously, I'm happy to see my fave on the on the grid. Like, who isn't? She's just the best. Yeah. But I think it's it's funny that they didn't announce anything for Carlos, which just gets me further thinking that Carlos has no intentions of staying at Ferrari. Well, yeah. I mean, those those rumors are like they're so rampant. They, they're, like, they're 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 everywhere. Yeah. And, so. And then there were rumors of Lando potentially going to Red Bull. Yeah. Yeah. Lando I did see going that. somewhere. But I feel like we always talk about Charles being so committed to ferrari and winning the championship with ferrari but lando has that exact same mindset with mclaren no for sure for sure like i don't see no i don't see lando going anywhere like so who's more delusional that they could win a championship with that team or who who do you think would get that championship first i guess is the better question uh after last year i would say lando lando with mclaren but if you would have asked me before last year i would have said charles so like it's just an ever-changing thing Mm -hmm. you know just based on on car and teammate too but both of them have very good teammates yeah so I don't know. For the time being. For the time being. We'll see. I'm excited, though. I mean, Oscar and Lando just have, they have a good team dynamic. I think the for the time being comes with Carlos, just because we don't know how long Carlos is going to actually be with Ferrari um, and who could possibly replace him. Like, I don't know. Well, it's not Lando. But if it's Alex Albon, I stand by. Both of them have great teammates. Yeah. 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 Okay, well, I'm excited to see 
Lando and the McLaren for coming years. They neither of them announced how many years it was. Hey, they just said it just says multi year. Um, but they do that. Yeah. It's like that scene from DTS when Charles told Carlos, he's like, find out how long his contract is extended yeah, for. Yeah, 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 yeah. I wish we would get something. Well, like that. I saw something on Twitter this week that... Oh, the the date, DTS season six. It actually came out oh, the yeah. day after we recorded. It was confirmed for February 23rd. Yeah, so we're still waiting on that um, graduate acceptance letter because that also we talked about <laughs> happening. But uh, yeah, um, after we talked about conflicting reports about DTS season six coming out um it was confirmed and announced by Netflix the next mm-hmm. day that it was indeed going to be February 23rd I guess I'm busy <laughs> on February 23rd is that a Friday it's usually oh, a Friday I don't when actually they drop know it. what day is it when season four came out um that day the highway is closed and I was living outside the city at the time so I couldn't leave my house to go to school or so to work. the perfect excuse. I literally watched the entire season in one sitting. And my mom was like, are you sick of the tires yet? Like, the, <laughs> and the engine? I'm like, no, I'm no. not. It actually is therapeutic for me. It puts me right in, like, a calm mood. No, I'm not tired of it. <laughs> that is a good segue into the Rolex 24 at Daytona. No. 24 are you hours. you tired of listening to the engine hum yet? <laughs> 24 hours of racing. Um, this is the first time we both watched it. Yeah. And it's still going on as we're recording right now. There's one hour left or just over an hour left. First impressions of IMSA? It's like super chaotic, but usually I live for the chaos. So I'm yeah. like kind of down. Yeah. Very confused though. Like not, I understand what's going on, but like I just can't differentiate the cars, especially when it's dark. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know who's racing against who. Um, also I find it a little difficult to like, I actually, we we talked about how we actually watched quite a bit of it, Mm -hmm. but I find it a bit difficult to like keep my attention when I know that like, you know, we still have like 17 hours of racing to go. So like Like, in 16 hours, then it'll be like, you know, go time. (laughs) Well, apparently so much happened last night. Yeah. Like all the standings changed. Um, James Hinchcliffe and Alexander Rossi in the number nine car, they had to retire. Yeah. I was like, oh. I know. I was so I sad. Was guys. I love seeing Hinch in the car. Mm-hmm. Does he just pop up to the broadcast booth now? <laughs> he was on the broadcast was. earlier. <laughs> and oh my gosh. Okay. No, no, no. I was talking to someone. Someone on Instagram. Sydney. So she she's watching IMSA. I don't know if she usually watches IMSA, um, but she was watching the 24 hours of Daytona. And she asked me if I had caught the interview with Bloomquist. And I was like, no, like I missed it. And so I guess the guy interviewing him was asking him about his 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 uh, workout routine and jokingly said do you want to show the national audience your biceps and Bloom- bloomquist was like maybe i should just take my shirt off and the camera like panned as like a joke obviously but then one of the nbc announcers goes maybe don't go full george russell <laughs> oh that's funny i was like oh i love the little crossover that we have yeah here. yeah i mean what i am enjoying about imsa right now is you're just looking across at all these names that you know. Mm-hmm. Like, sorry, pause. Breaking news. Breaking news. Right in the middle of recording right now. Just right now they retired? Two minutes. Uh, three minutes ago it was posted, yeah, on Twitter. Marcus Erickson in the number 10. I mean, not just Marcus Erickson, but there's a whole team of The them. number 10 card just DNF'd. Yes. Damn. After 601 laps, it says they persevered through the night and the morning, but the Quantico Minolta crew called it quits. That's from um, UNA Wayne on Twitter the first i just searched imza just to see if we were missing anything while we were recording that's the first thing i saw so damn damn well another name we know gone well yeah that's what i was saying like we know lots of these names from indycar but then we know them like tony Kanan, hinch which we also know from the indie series but there's so many drivers names that you see and you're like oh i know who that is brendan hartley mm-hmm. he's an xf1 driver um like i'm just seeing all these names i'm like oh this is super cool it's like every like racing drivers from every like series mm-hmm. well and the thing with IMSA and I know WEC is very similar as well they need to have depending on the class of cars because there's four classes either needs to be like pro drivers or it can only be pro drivers or some classes needs to have at least one or two amateur drivers yeah exactly so so definitely our names we don't know because we don't know lots of amateur drivers but um yeah it is kind of Mm. kind of cool just like it it catches your attention right like it's the same way that we got into India we knew the names like um Kalamila we knew Pato and then you get into imza by just like looking at the familiar faces and names right um clem f2 driver yep. not f2 anymore yeah he was supposed to race in the 52 car I but so. he i guess during one of the practice sessions got like extremely injured oh shoot. so that's why he wasn't racing and that's why um 
Fittipaldi was mm. in like replaced him instead. Like he found out the night before that he was going to be in the car. Wow. But I actually, honestly, they were right before we started recording. They were like leading or second in their class. So, and it was Fittipaldi driving. So mm. I mean, he's doing pretty good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I love Clem though. I would have liked to have seen I Clem. I like Clem. I hope he is has a speedy recovery and is okay. Yeah. Because his TikToks, if you don't follow him, he's so, so funny. funny. Have you listened to Screaming Meals? Their no, podcast? but I should because I like all of those guys. I know. I know. I, I just like, listen. Think about all the podcasts. <laughs> I know. Well, for me, I listen to so many podcasts because I'm into so many sports. But mm. I'm like, when you have... I don't even think they just talk about motorsports. I think No, it's they talk about life. Everything. Well. Yeah. Did you see... Um, transitioning away for like just a quick sec um lissy and marcus armstrong were at court size and yeah yeah. Yeah. and she (laughs) did you hear tiktok when she's like how do i tell marcus that i want a diet soda (laughs) there's like no time left (laughs) oh my god i love that um i was gonna say something else about imza oh they don't race consecutively during the season like they have break like a lot of long breaks in between which is why a lot of the indycar drivers can yeah also drive imza yeah but no, like, current Formula One drivers do it. No, no. Mm-hmm. But they also don't do, like, I was thinking about it because IMSA is the North American, mm-hmm. I would say the North American WEC, um, even though they're a little different. Yeah. But no F1 drivers drive in WEC either. And they could, like, I think I mean, schedule Mick wise. does, but he's a reserve driver. He's a reserve driver, yeah, right. That makes sense. So, yeah, I think there's just such heavy rules on F1 drivers because the stakes are so high and mm-hmm. the the money is so extravagant compared to a lot of other racing series. It's like they're like, no, you're not you allowed. can't really like jeopardize that. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Anyway, there's an hour left. Um, we'll post about it on social media when it's done. But I think this was a really good, a really good intro for IMSA for us. Mm-hmm. And then also shout out to GridClick if you yes, don't follow them yeah. because they posted an IMSA 101 which helped immensely and just following their content and everything that they posted was so helpful. Mm-hmm. We are, I promise we will do an intro to WEC episode. I understand that one a bit better than IMSA, but anyway. I'm actually having a, a, an easier time with IMSA now that I can see it, you know? Yeah. And the commentators were explaining what was going on. Yeah, yeah. It was Because they have good. 24 hours. Like, they can. They have so much time. So are there com- or, um, uh, spectators there? Like, yeah. is it, are they available to be there the entire time? I think so. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure tickets were fairly inexpensive. Yeah, yeah. And you could just you could just go and sit wherever. Yeah. So interesting. Maybe we'll check out a shorter race. <laughs> I actually don't think I could sit for like twelve hours though oh, to watch a race. Absolutely not. Just like one race, I don't think I could. <laughs> but I think that like maybe once our audience grows a little bit, we should do like a if we hit this many subscribers. We'll watch the entire 24 hours race live. <laughs> I never posted the picture with Callum Eilat. No, you never when did. When we hit 10K. But I sent it to you, you. You sent it to me. It's not as bad as you thought. It just brings back traumatic but memories I'm traumatized. for you. Right. For those of you who are new um, or who maybe just don't remember the story, um, Emma met Kyla- Callum Eilat at the Toronto Indy race last uh summer Mm -hmm. and it was the first driver she had met so she was extremely caught off guard and um i forgot i forgot how to speak so what did you say (laughs) (laughs) that's what i said (laughs) and didn't he just say what yes he was like what and i was like (laughs) i was like this is just so embarrassing for me just take my picture and leave honestly if i was a driver and someone said that to me i think i would try to like preserve it for them and be like Thank you. It's so nice to meet you too. <laughs> no, Callum was like, <laughs> like he just, I vividly remember him like shaking his head and being like, "What?" Like, <laughs> oh, that was amazing. He's real. He's like, "What the fuck is wrong with this girl?" <laughs> anyway, I'm crying. Oh, what was that picture? It's not a bad photo. I'm just traumatized. Yeah, my face is turning red. <laughs> okay, let's move on. <laughs> um. We had mentioned this. I just want to talk about it briefly. We mentioned it. We had recorded another episode that unfortunately did not come out. We mentioned it in that episode. But Pato is single. And we're yeah. going to leave it at that. Like, he... Are we going to drop that episode eventually, though, or no? I don't know. Okay. Maybe not. Okay. But... Was there anything in that episode that we need to then talk about today? Visa Cash App? RB? Yeah. Okay. RB we're a little it. behind the ball on that one now, but uh, Visa Cash App? RB? We don't know if RB stands for Red Bull or Racing Bulls. I think Racing Bulls. I hope not. Visa Cash App RB. But their logo says Visa RB Cash App. 
Like it's not Visa Cash App RB. Yeah, I know what you mean, but there's Visa RB handle is Visa Cash App RB RB. That's nice. <laughs> That's I fun. Don't know. They're they're all Atari in my brain, and they're Toro Rosso if that fails. So V Carb is what people are calling them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. V Carb. Mm-hmm. Oh, I like that. I'd call them V Carb. Maybe I'll use that. I think. What do you think the commentators are going to call it? Like, there's Danny Ricardo in the Visa Cash App RB. Like, you know, that doesn't, it doesn't flow. I, but they have to, like, for sponsorship I reasons, know. right? I, don't know. I think. They but are you to. seeing all of the, um, like, those pictures now where it's like Max Verstappen in the, and it's just like crazy names and at the, the at at this corner sponsored by this. Um, and it brings out the red flag sponsored by that. I know exactly what you're talking about. I saw a funny one on Twitter. Alex AWS Albin crashes at the Amazon Prime Parabolica in the Bet 365 Casino Powertrains Williams during the Louis Vuitton Italian GP. This triggers the monster energy red flag and the second Delivero safety car of the race. Who's that from? Uh, this is just on Twitter. F1 wow on Twitter. Like That's so funny. That's just like what it, yeah. That's where everything is to. where sponsorship at. Just everything is like sponsorship at. Well the the Daytona twenty four used to just be called Daytona, but now it's Rolex twenty four because of sponsorship reasons. Which is fine. If I think one sponsorship name is mm-hmm. like, yeah, cool, mm-hmm. no problem. The winners Rolex get Daytona. The, the winners get Rolexes. Yeah, I'm sure I'm sure. Good for them. Um <laughs> do, are you a knives out fan? Am I a Knives Out fan? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. I love a good Eat the Rich movie. <laughs> Not a murder mystery. And a murder mystery. Just and a eat murder the rich mystery. Movie. So I love Knives Out. Mm-hmm. And they're casting for Knives Out 3 right now. And they posted like, I don't know which which um, studio they're with, but they posted like, who should who, who should be casted in Knives Out 3? Because it's like a big like... It's a um, star-studded star-studded cast. Star-studded cast, right? An ensemble cast. And I was thinking about it. I'm like, hmm, if you could cast like a, like a race car driver... Knives Out. Like, who would you cast as, like, the detective? And then, like, who did it? Oh. And, like, some of the side characters. Oh, my God. If we were to cast, like, a murder mystery. Yeah. Um, Dan and Ricardo, is, he's got to be, like, there. The character yeah, yeah. that's there for, like, comedic relief. But, like, gets shot, like, or or dies. I like, made. Fairly early, I would say. I used one of those TikTok filters once. To, I, like, I remember uh, exactly what you're talking about when you made I your I think it was mystery. Yuki that died and everyone, and I'm trying to remember what it was. Fernando was blamed and then Lando and then I think, and it ended up Yuki being the one to who did delete it? himself. Oh, okay. <laughs> but in real, like, mm. like, who would you put in it though? Like, I think that my like detective <sighs> You've thought about this. Okay, go. I think my detective would be Mick Schumacher. Like, it doesn't need to be, like, like current grid. My detective would not be Mick Schumacher. <laughs> I feel like Mick Schumacher would probably end up dying if I were to, like... Okay, so we have very different, like, mm-hmm. like. Um, I don't think ideals. he'd be the first victim, but I think he would be one of the victims. It, who, who gets framed in yours? Max play into that villain era and he's just okay, like i didn't mine's lance <laughs> don't even this is a hypothetical <laughs> i know who actually ends up being the murderer like who who do you think could get away with it oscar that's I think, actually such a good answer i think oscar could get away with it but i also think that he would need to get lando like on his side to like he needs an alibi Maybe, but I don't think you tell Lando Norris like a thing if you're trying to keep a secret. <laughs> That's also true. Oscar. I'm going to go Oscar did it. Okay. Um, I'm going to say Oscar did it in the garage with a wrench. Oh, That's my clue. Okay. Little. Do you know how in clue? Yeah. Always yes. like, That's what I did. Um, Is there an F1 clue? There wouldn't be. No, but there should be. There should be. Okay, I'm so I, <laughs> I asked the question without actually having like an answer, but you guys tell us who your knives out cast would be if you're casting like race car drivers. Like, give us Indy, give us Reserve, give us F2, give us F1, whatever works for you. We'll take it all. Um, I just thought it was kind of fun because I'm like, oh, these casts are so much fun. Mm-hmm. I love those movies. Like, think about personalities that you know and throw them in there. Who would be the detective in yours? I said oh, you Mick. said Mick. You know, I'm going to cast Danny as the detective. In oh, mine. that's a terrible idea. I know, but I think it'd be so good. Like, Danny's like, one of those side characters in in my movie like 
he could be a main character, but he's not the one that dies and he's not the detective. So he's not the main character. Fernando could be a detective. I could see it. Yeah. Seb, there's a movie coming out called Beekeeper. (laughs) This this makes sense. And it's like it's like a spy movie. But the guy, his job is like a beekeeper. Do you know what I'm talking about? Have you seen the trailer no. for this movie? Is Sebastian Vettel in it? No, but I'm just thinking like they could have cast, they should have cast Sebastian Vettel in it. I just feel like it's very on brand for him. Yeah. To be like a beekeeper by day and like also saving the world by night. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. That is true. Anyway. Um, I'm just going to go back to Fernando Alonso for a second. Him and George are like friends. Oh, that plane video. That plane video. It was very cute. And then this is the second New Year's in a row where they've spent together. Like, I, is he adopting George? Like, I don't know what's <laughs> going on here. But they're always together. Yeah, I did see that. And this is not the duo that I would have expected. No, no, like an unlikely pair for sure. But Fernando was like... You know what? Fernando's actually good friends with pretty much everyone on the grid. Remember when Valtteri gave him those shoes or Fernando gave Valtteri those shoes? No, I don't remember. There was like a shoe swap. A shoe swap? Not like, they were new shoes. They weren't okay. like old shoes. No, I don't remember, but... He's, like, got a great sense of humor. He's, like, pretty relatable, I'd say, for, like, being an older driver to the younger guys. Like, I'd say yeah. he's pretty relatable. Um, yeah. Just not the driver duo that I... No, for <laughs> sure. Back to... you. We were talking about the murder mystery thing. We were also talk, You brought up Oscar. Mm-hmm. Did we ever talk... This Was this off-season when that, that person on Twitter tweeted how disgusting it was that Oscar Piastri was in F1 because he killed his girlfriend? Thinking, oh, my mistaking God. Oscar Piastri for Oscar Pistorius. Like, I know this is old news to all of you who are, like, super into, it. like, the Twitter, F1 Twitter game and just motorsports in general. But, like, we never talked about it. But you bringing up, like, Oscar being part of a murder mystery, I was like, oh, my God, that's exactly what that made me think of. Oh, I no, I totally forgot. I don't know if we ever did talk about it. I don't think we did. Yeah. I mean, very similar names. But do your research. <laughs> do you, like, I don't, you really think a, a murderer would be a Formula 1 driver? Like, I don't, I don't. <laughs> just... Was the, 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 the tweet was just so like like how he seen Formula One accusatory when he murdered his girlfriend. and like sure. Do you think he saw that tweet? One hundred percent. Because his mom's big on Twitter. Yeah, true. So even if he didn't, she she probably would have. She's probably just like, honey, is there something I need to know with <laughs> Lily? Like, like um, obviously not funny that he's like his name like got pulled into that, but just funny, just scenario. funny at the same time because <laughs> this person was so sure of themselves when they posted it. Um. Oh, well. Not a murderer in real life or hypothetical. No. Just a genuine guy. Just He's just there. And he's he's enjoying the off-season. That picture that he posted with Lily. Yeah. Throwback to when I originally thought she was dating Logan Sargent. Okay, but there were I know. articles. I know. <laughs> no one ever talks about it. I've never seen another motorsports But she was linked to Logan it. Sargent. Not in just one article. I it know, was a few. There was also pictures. Like, I don't know. And I feel delusional because, I mean, I am delusional, but no one else said a thing about it. And it's like... I don't think they ever did date. I think, like, the articles just got it wrong. Yeah. But, yeah, that was funny. (laughs) Um, Okay, moving on. Chicago. Oh, my God. So... Formula One Grand Prix of Chicago, Chicago Grand Prix, Formula One Chicago, all of these terms have been trademarked as of January 19th. Emma did the research in the trademark. Because I saw a tweet from Formula, it was Formula God, I think. And I, you take everything on Twitter with a grain of salt. Yeah. But I was like, no, 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 I'm going to look into this. And yeah, like I looked on, it's this, it's this government website that shows all of the Everything that's trademarked, everything that's registered, and Formula One Grand Prix of Chicago as of January 19th, 2024, has been trademarked. Like, are we getting another street circuit? NASCAR races in Chicago, or like just outside of it, I think, don't they? I don't know. I don't follow NASCAR, but I am a little disappointed here just because that would be four. For American races. American races. What if they get rid of Miami? When is Miami contracted to? I don't know when Miami's contracted to, but I do think they worry a little bit about um, Miami's weather because I know that there were lots of people last year getting sick. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know if maybe that they're, they'd be looking to replace Miami. And I understand wanting to keep a third American race on the gri- or on the circuit. I get that. Um, 
But yeah, yeah I don't four. My the only reason I would be so down for this is because we have a friend that lives in Chicago, mm-hmm. and we would have like a just like a girls' motorsport sleepover weekend, and like that sounds like a dream. Would not be upset if there was a Chicago race, but only if they were to like replace, replace it. Replace it. But they can't or replace get, a different race yeah. in Chicago. Yeah. Um, there's Chicago Speedway, but it's an oval, and then NASCAR has the Chicago Street Course. So, sorry, I'm just every time we take a little break there i look at what's going on in imza right now just because we're like nearing the end of the race and in gtp so it's bloomquist and nasser so the 31 car versus the seven car um like four seven is is new gardens car by the way yes yeah yeah so those are the, but those are the two drivers in the car right now mm-hmm. and um so it's those two like really like chasing each other at the moment mm-hmm. um and anyways this person d land 91 on twitter just uh tweeted 31 car is owned by the people who own nascar and the seven car is owned by the people that own IndyCar. So NASCAR just passed IndyCar for the lead in the IMSA race. <laughs> oh my God. Which is kind of funny. I me. love that. Yeah. But that seems like that battle is one to be watching. Um, obviously, this episode is going to come out and you guys will know what has happened. But um, I'm just, that's what I'm keeping an eye on. Thanks, Hannah. Yeah. Thanks for the updates. Um, what were you saying? Oh, NASCAR does a, there's a Chicago street course. And then there's also the Chicago Speedway, like I said, but it's an oval. So I don't know. NASCAR does a street course? That's what it's saying. The Chicago street course is a 2.2 mile street circuit in the city of Chicago, currently hosts the NASCAR Cup Series and the NASCAR Xfinity Series. I thought NASCAR was entirely in ovals. Look, I don't, if you're a motorsport no. fan, being can you like, explain this to us, What do you know or what, or what? How do you not know anything about NASCAR? I've never, that's one racing series I have absolutely never spent one minute um, watching or learning. Um, however, NASCAR is getting a Netflix series. <gasps> yeah. So I probably will watch that just because I am a slut for a Netflix sports documentary. <laughs> I'm watching the rugby one right mm-hmm. now because one of our listeners told me to. So good. Like rugby scares the hell out of me just because yeah. of how violent of a sport it is. But it's about the Six Nations Cup. It is so good. I don't have time. I'm not telling you to. I'll watch NASCAR. I'll watch the NASCAR I documentary. Um, people are saying it fits that in your motorsport bubble. I like my little bubble <laughs> i like motorsports i was talking to um i think i like this little life oh did you see lando <laughs> with that <Yeah>. sign <laughs> Who? give admin a raise because he yeah. just handed lando a sign and he's just i like this little life or whatever yeah amazing that's the content that we need it's <laughs> so good it was everything to me what was i saying nascar you're gonna watch a sports documentary um i don't know oh well the street circuit i was talking to my friend last night and he was like, I need something to watch. And I just said, uh, Rolex 24 Daytona. And I sent, sent the link. And I was like, this is all I, this is all I'm going to suggest to anyone right now. Um, but yeah, I will probably watch the NASCAR documentary. People are saying that IndyCar needs to do the same thing. They do. IndyCar does not. Excuse me. Excuse pick me. up? What is that? Pick, pick up. up. Um, IndyCar does not have a partnership with Netflix. Or like, no, they don't. And it's IndyCar is has it's that partnership with NBC. NBC series, yeah. And it'd be on Peacock, if yeah. anything. Yeah. But that documentary, that style, they mimicked it with 100 Days to Indy, and it was really good, but they got to do it. They got to do more. They got to do more. Mm-hmm. They got to showcase more of the drivers, and they have to do more of the races. Because, but, yes, the Indy 500 is like a um, a spectacle. But there's a whole but season. But there's a whole season that's What I, I liked about 100 Days to Indy, though, is it was real time. Right. Like it wasn't like it came out the next for the the season prior. Yeah, yeah. Like it was. It was leading up to that mm-hmm. year, so that sure. was fun. But, but no, they do because, yeah. um, the hundred days to indie, from what I've seen of it, which is very minimal, it is great. But they they do talk just about the five hundred, and um, there are some motorsport fans that are primarily Formula One who think that, and this is where we were last year, think that ovals are quote unquote boring. So to show it leading up to a race in an oval might not draw in as many fans as you would if you like, like if you, if you put um, Laguna Seca on an episode, like, holy hell, that Mm -hmm. race was so good. And that's a street or like a, like a St. Pete's, like one of the first races of the season. That was a gong show. Right. But like, and those are not ovals and those are more similar to like an F1 style circuit that I think that like, that's, that could like help bridge that crossover between like, 
this type of motorsport fan over to um, IndyCar. So I think that, yeah, they need to do a little bit more of that. They've got to know, like, that's what's working. They'll probably see how NASCAR does it and then go from there. Yeah. But but it, you're right. It would they, not be on Netflix. No. Yeah. It'd be like CW or Peacock. Yeah. Um, also, if that happens and you need media members. <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> like we're here yeah half joking but um i wonder how many days are till indy there's like 30 some days till formula one start yeah it's not that much for indy as well because testing testing is is now i think that they've started testing or they will next or starting tomorrow i think i read somewhere that carlos and charles start testing right away the first race is on march 10th they'll be obviously like testing before that but um it's like 40 some days yeah we are not far out at all that's wild yeah i love indycar moving on from indy back to ferrari some changes in their driver lineup but like not really driver lineup uh ollie Behrman is yeah. their reserve driver yeah. now so he was haas's reserve driver last year right yes but haas was a customer car of ferrari so this mm-hmm. makes sense yeah and now he is their 2024 reserve driver he's yeah. he is he? He's 18. he's eighteen. He's eighteen. Yeah, he's young. Holy! Yeah. Oh my goodness! And he's still racing in Formula Two next year. Mm-hmm. Wow! I didn't realize he was so young. Good for him. And additionally, Arthur Leclerc is a new development driver for Ferrari. Yeah. So he is no longer with the Ferrari Driver Academy. Hey, that was announced at the end of December. That, that was announced. Yeah, and he was not racing in Formula Two. Right. To be fair, though, I was looking at his stats from with F2 last year. It was his first year in F2. He finished the season 15th in the standings with 49 points. And then his teammate, Iwasa, who is Red Bull Driver Academy, or Red Bull Driver Development Program, mm-hmm. he finished with 165 points. Mm-hmm. So they were – it was quite a lot. Mm-hmm. I don't um, – I haven't really seen Arthur race or in the times that I have seen him race. It's been a little underwhelming. Um, but I know he's racing in the Italian GT Championship mm-hmm. in 2024. and Yeah, with Scuderia Baldini. So, I don't know. I mean, this is not the last we'll see of him. And obviously, he's still going to be working closely with Ferrari. Yeah. But not in F2 anymore. Did his caption make you like... Oh, about racing alongside his brother yeah. or like sharing the track with his brother. Yeah. 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 It got me for a second. I was like, oh. Would you ever do anything with your sister? Would I ever do anything with her? Like a... Like, a sport or like we we have played on the same soccer team before oh really How'd it's that go? not good because my sister is a more aggressive player but she's very good mm. but when when people get mad at her for being aggr- an aggressive player i find it necessary to then go at them verbally mm. um which my <laughs> sister will just walk away but i i feel like i have to defend her That's being fair. an older sister it's never a good scenario. I get super anxious when we play on the same team. Um, so we don't need more because of that reason. I'm just protective of her That's on the fair. field. That's fair. I've never done anything with my sister. Soccer when we were four. No, you guys were it. very different mm-hmm. in terms of your extracurriculars. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, well, exciting news for Arthur. Exciting news for Ollie. Did I'm sorry. Did we forget to finish talking about Chicago? Do you think this is real? That... That we're going to see a track there. I mean, I think if they're trademarking it, it's for a reason. You don't go through that process. That's wild. We we have Crush Tracker again this week. Coming in hot at number three, Pato Award. For his his IMSA content. Okay. He just always has great photo dumps. Yeah. The, his videos are great. He's he does excited to be there. He's just he's giving what we need right now. Yeah. Um, number two. This is kind of older, but... Mick Schumacher. Okay. But it's the the video with um his girlfriend of them just like doing that trend of all the outfits. It's everything. Did you see our comment? Got like our comment? Well, I commented on it from like the track talk account and I said, She's Barbie and he's Ken, but he's not just Ken, he's also Barbie. Oh yeah, no. <laughs> got, the comments like, got a, like a bunch of likes on and it. And I was like, yeah. wow, people agree with this. Yeah. Because like she's completely up to style. He looks so good. The coordination. It's everything. I'm living for it. And the, in that trend, it's like like very minimal, but he just, he throws a little bit of spice in there He's too. just, oh, I yeah. just love him so much. And then number one, um, Lando Norris. Mm. What did he do this week? Sign a contract? <laughs> he signed a contract. <laughs> um, but also the, really promoting the McLaren-Abercrombie collab. 
Mm, yes. And I do own pieces from this collab. Yeah, it's a good collab. Yeah. But yeah, it was all the content that came out with that and just how excited he is. And he's number one on my crush tracker this week. That's it. Congratulations, Lando. Good job, Lando. Five points for you. <laughs> That's crush tracker. Um, I have just one final note on the winners of the Australian Open. If you watched um, in a historic match for Italians, Yannick Sinner wins the men's draw on the of the Australian Open. He is like 20 years old and oh he's honestly just like the coolest. Like he was ranked number four in the world. He took out Novak in his semifinal and he just uh, really early this morning beat Daniel Medvedev um, to win his first Grand Slam. So congratulations, Yannick. I'm so happy for him. Also, Arena Sabalenka on the women's side won back-to-back Australian Opens, which is bonkers. Congratulations, Arena. Super cool. I might as know what I'm talking about. No. But I don't know if you saw on our story the other day, I posted that Yannick Sinner has a group of fans that travel to all of his tournaments with him that dress as carrots. Did you not watch our own story? No. Crazy. This week was a lot. So... Yeah, so because he has red hair, he has a group Shut of up. fans called the Karota Boy- Boys. Kate, I didn't know what you were talking about, yes. but I did see it, and, and I was like, what? they dress in what? carrots, and they go to like almost every tournament that he's in, and they ha- have like thousands of followers on Instagram. I love that. Um, and they just are his biggest fans, and they support him, and um, That's yeah, so fun. yeah, it is super fun. It's like I I tried to put it in like F one terms on our close friend story for the people that wanted to be on the tennis story, and it's like um if. Carlos Sainz had like a group of of fans called like Los Chiles or something like that. And dress as chilies. And just dress as chilies to every race. That's a good that's what it would be like. It, it would be it's a good comparison yeah. in my mind. Yeah. Um interesting. So yeah. Wow, I love that. It's very like like fun. I like to just throw these little also he's one of the only um athletes that have a has a Gucci partnership, which is oh. crazy and so cool. Just being an Italian. He's 20? Ten- 20. How are these athletes so young mm-hmm. and so talented? I know. I could never. I know, me neither. I'm not young anymore, though. No, we're old. Anyways, that's all I got. This was another week of passing the time until Formula One and IndyCar starts. <laughs> we are a track talk. Oh, wait. Um, one more. <laughs> Sorry. Um, you're going to throw this out here again. Send us your questions for David. Yes, please. And if you're watching on YouTube, hit that like button and subscribe. I think we <laughs> forgot we had a YouTube channel. I forgot. Um, and like this episode on whatever platform you're listening to. This was another week of passing the time until IndyCar and Formula One starts. We are Track Talk. Catch out for now.